First off, I wanna ask everybody to go back and check out the last video that I posted just before this video. I had to re-upload it due to a weird music issue where the song that I use is basically blocked all over the world except for the United States. And YouTube doesn't really like re-upload, so it kind of snuffs the video out and doesn't really advertise it or broadcast it to anybody that, I, that a new upload has been uploaded. So um, I had a lot of fun making that video and I thought it was a particularly fun video to watch. So I'd appreciate just feedback on that video because I really enjoyed making it. And now I want to present to you the new doll T5040C, and uh, they love their numbering schemes. <laughs> so this prop was specifically designed to replace the old 5x4x3. Now let's go over the 5x4x3. This is, a, this is a very legendary prop. It's a prop that's been extremely popular from the day it came out. And uh, it originally came from, uh, man, I forgot the name of the company, A AW, oh, man, I totally forgot the name of the company. I don't know, I'm having a brain fart here. I can't remember it. Anyways, what happened was, HQ actually copied that blade from that company, and um, it wasn't APC. Damn it, I really can't remember that name of the company. HQ copied the blade from that company, and then I think Chad asked them to make it in a tri-blade, and that's where this prop originally came from. Now, when it became super popular, uh, Doll, Racecraft, um, Gemfan, and uh, I'm sure two or three, King Kong and somebody else, copied the blade because it was so darn, darn popular. And uh, Gemfan actually thinks that they were the first to make it. I don't know, maybe they were, who knows. Basically, it came from that original company. Nobody was really the original person that made this prop. And ever since they came out, it's kind of held the crown as one of the best acrobatic props. I personally think because of the way it responds and the way it just it just feels so nice in the air because it has such great response and it has this wispy quality to it that, it, that you really don't get with a lot of other props. And so it's stuck around for a long, long time. And I, and I particularly like the DAL version because I really like the polycarbonate they use. The plastic they use is just really, really durable, and I really love it. So now let's look at the newest version. And when you look at this prop, it looks a lot like the original Cyclone blade. Now, blade. now I don't have any original Cyclone blades left with me anymore, but here is a uh, 5046. And when you look at the two blade profiles side by side, they look very, very similar. The new 5040 basically just looks like a shallower pitch version of the 5046, which might not be a bad thing. But when you look at the the above view, the the blade profile is, is totally different. And it, you can now tell that it's been a completely re-engineered prop. About a year, I don't even know how long ago, well over a year ago, when the original Cyclone Blade came out, I begged them to make a lighter, thinner version of the prop because I really wanted it to replace the 5x4x3. Now, the original Cyclone was already an awesome prop. I just didn't like the heavy feel of the prop. It just, just feels thick in the air. So, I mean, I don't know why it took them a year to come out with this prop, but finally they did. And ever since the original Cyclone Blade, dolls, all of dolls' props have been made by this one guy, which they, I don't know who he is. I've never met him. I don't know his name or anything about him, but they keep telling me that he's a, a leading aerodynamics professor in China. And, I mean, he really knows what he's doing because he's made one of the most successful blades or lines of blades in the industry. The Cyclone Blade sells hundreds of thousands of sets. That means sets of four each month. Hundreds of thousands worldwide. That's a pretty astonishing number. I don't think there's a single other prop company that sells that many props. You know, kudos to Dahl for doing it. They designed it specifically to replace the 5x4x3. And I think that it's the first prop that has a chance at replacing the 5x4x3, or at least having it be an alternate prop. Now, since they were made to, it was made to replace it, it makes logical sense to compare the two. So let's just really quickly compare the two. The amp draw of both of these props is about the same. It's within one, I flew about 10 packs on each each prop, the same battery, the same batteries I recharged and flew on each, each prop. I also uh, flipped them back and forth because after you recharge batteries, sometimes it flies better. And I got about the same amps. It really was, it was almost impossible for me to distinguish by the amp draw, which prop I was flying. The max amps were within one amp of each other. The cruising amps just seemed about the same. And the flight time was pretty much identical, which is a, it's a pretty, pretty big, big thing to say about this prop because doing that is pretty difficult. This, this 5x4x3 is really a fantastic, efficient prop. Now let's look at the durability. The 5x4x3, the doll version, you can check it. I mean, it's, I have no other way to show durability other than to flex it like this. You can see where how it flexes and how flexible it is. Now let's flex the new prop. And you will notice that it is much, much, much stiffer. Much, much, much stiffer. So it's, they're both using the same plastic and basically the blade has more plastic in this section. So I would assume, I haven't crashed them yet, but I would assume that the, doll, the new version is gonna be 
significantly more durable, if, if, if not at least the same durability. The weight of both of these props is exactly the same, 3.9 grams. Maybe the new version is like 10, 5 thousandths of a gram heavier, and uh, that's that was what I got when I weighed a whole bunch of them divided by, by the number of props. And uh, I don't know how they made it feel at least stiffer and more durable using what seems like the same plastic, just with a different design. And now let's get to the actual differences of these two props. First and foremost, the throttle, the throttle response and the throttle control of the new prop is much more linear than the previous 5x4x3. Now the 5x4x3 is a fantastic prop, but it, it is not a particularly well-balanced prop in terms of throttle range and just control range in general. It gives you a, a significant burst of power down low in the low to mid-low section of the throttle range. And then when you start getting past like mid-throttle, it kind of tapers off a lot. And uh, what the new version does, the new doll prop does, it gives you a similar kind of burst of power down low, but the major band of power is more around the midsection, and it's a wider band of power. And that's very important for the next difference between these two props. In addition to that, I feel like the new version is might be just a tad fa faster, I and mean, they're supposed to have the same pitch. It's hard to distinguish which one's actually faster just through FPV, but they feel about the same. So now let's get to the actual difference. Because of the throttle range difference between these two props and the new prop having a much more even throttle range in the midsection, I believe that has resulted in a much more accurate control in the mid stick throw section. Like, not like just the middle areas where you're balancing the stick, not in the center or not all the way deflected. In the mid deflection range, I have far more control with the new prop. And that is the, honestly, that's that's really the biggest difference. That That is the number one difference that I felt between these two props. So everything else aside, nothing else matters. That is one reason why I think that this prop may actually replace the old HQ, the, not the HQ, the old 5x4x3 design. In addition to that, when I went back and put the 5x4x3, the old previous version, which this has been the prop that I fly, prime, like I fly this prop 9.9 out of 10 times. I am, I pretty much always have this prop in my bag and I have it on my quads. After flying two packs on this new prop and then going back to the old prop, I felt like the old prop was was a raspy mess. I felt like the tune was totally off. I felt like I had no control. Throttle was was unpredictable. The midsection of the stick was really unpredictable. The quad would just rotate and do weird, weird actions when I didn't intend for it to do those actions. I was really in shock. I was I was shocked at how different I the different it felt after flying this new prop. So I'm kind of exaggerating. I mean, it sounds like I'm exaggerating, but in my head, it's not an exaggeration. So it might sound like an exaggeration, and I'm not trying to particularly hype this prop. I just think that it's a it's a pretty darn good prop, and the guy that makes these props really knows what he's doing, because um, every single Cyclone Blade that has come out has been very, very successful. Very, very successful. And I'm going to keep flying it. I don't know if I'm going to completely replace the 5x4x3, because I, I, again, need to go back and, you know, fly a bunch of packs on the 5x4x3 and see if I really think that the new version is worth the change. Because, I mean, at this point, I've been flying this prop for two years now, well over two years now, and it's hard for me to say, oh yes, now I have a new thing to replace it with. That's all for now. Um, here's some flight video, and, uh, this prop is going to come up next. In the next video, this prop is going to come up. This is the Gatebreaker. It's a very interesting prop to me. A very interesting prop. I'm supposed to have a, a conversation with the designer, the lead designer at Lumineer, uh, regarding the Lumineer props and this prop in particular. And I'm waiting to do that before I actually report on it because, I mean, anybody that makes props on this kind of scale or, or puts this much effort into it has got to know something about what they're doing. And this is a very interesting prop to me because of the way it looks and the general overall design of the prop. Anyways, don't forget to floss. Here's the video.